Okay. Looks like we're back from the ad. Let me get back into things. I had a well-timed sneeze right before I was about to turn on the mic. All right, uh, the scene, yes? Wee. All right. Okay, so UI stuff. We, we did some we did some Rust and now some TypeScript. Uh, let's see, how do we go about doing this? So I have I have some handy tasks set up for um, for VS Code to launch things, like I was showing before with the uh, the diesel stuff. Um, do I not have one for? Um, thingy, storybook. How was I launching storybook before then? Sh Control Shift P, run tasks. Oh, it's uh, it's auto discovered from uh, because it's an npm script in the front end. Okay, so we'll do that. Um, and then it launches somewhere. I could preview in VS Code. That's kind of nice sometimes, just to have. Uh, copilot in, or not copilot, uh, have a storybook in as a sidebar. Let's take a look at that. Preview and editor. There we go. We have a little simple browser. I hide the terminal. Um, how do we switch between? Oh, I see. Probably down here. There we go. So um, I was working on doing stuff with the timeline and figuring out what was working and what's not and it needs some love but that's not what we're here for um, we're gonna add a new component and a story for it and I, I still don't have like any kind of component structure here um, like in the, uh, the other project we were working on before um, daily jewel he had a uh, uh, like a what do you call it? So there were like atoms and molecules and organism that kind of structure you might have seen elsewhere, uh, but we don't have any any of that quite yet, and I don't I don't know that I need it quite yet. We're just gonna dump some stuff. So I'm gonna make a folder, and the reason I'm gonna do that is because what I what we already know is that we're gonna have like at least two components. We're gonna have the underlying material UI based uh, UI component that is effectively stateless. And then we're gonna have a wrapper component that is going to tie into React Admin and our data provider and it's gonna get the information and it's going to get the, uh, the callback when the user does an action and it's gonna wire that all in. Um, and we could just, I, I think it's gonna be nicer if we just do a, um, uh, a thing like this so and this is kind of what I did for like duration input uh, as well so this is gonna be uh, what did I call it media picker input um, inputs. input input there we go and then what we'll do is we'll, we'll pre-create some things that we won't use quite yet so we'll create it index.tsx that'll be where the actual media picker input component lives so that'll be our react admin of wrapper and then um we'll just make a media picker so ker dot tsx uh and then we'll make a media picker story file so media picker dot story or stories looks like stories is okay and we could um you know like try to do this from memory but it's easy enough if we go over to our timeline stories file we'll take this and we'll just make a copy of it and we'll edit it to make it actually make sense for us here and now uh, so easiest thing to do, control H, uh, timeline can be replaced with media picker. Okay. Uh, we probably should at least make a component. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, that's fine. 
sure, 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 sure. Export default. There we go. We did it. We made a component. Uh, and then, uh, let's see. Let, let's let's talk about uh, what are what what do the props look like for this component? So let's make an interface. Yeah, media picker props. Uh, and we're not going to do anything with them yet, but we'll say props. Uh, there's a functional component uh, type that I sometimes, you know, you can do like uh, FC like that. You can also do that. And we just import FC from React. That does basically the same thing as, as you know, putting props colon and then that type there. Like if we hover over this, uh, that doesn't actually tell us anything, but it's function component. It just says whatever P is, we're saying the props is of type P and then yeah, things. So uh, what props should we uh, accept here? Not, not those. Um, so there should be a list of files or entries, entries. Uh, we may, might come back and add a type for that. And then, um, maybe just an on change. We are gonna own, so, so this component is ultimately gonna show a dialogue. And I think this component will handle the state of whether the dialogue is displayed or not. Is that true? Can that be true? Does this component, this component includes the button, right? To this, this, so there are three UI elements in a way that are part of this media picker. There's a button, there is uh, some kind of text field, and there is a dialogue. So this component is gonna own the state for whether the dialogue is displayed or not. Um, but it's not going to be responsible for like doing anything. I think on change makes the most sense here. On change, uh, on choose is also good. On choose is interesting. I could live with that. It's different. Difference not bad. Um, and then it's on the component, the media picker input to then translate the entry into what gets stored. Do we wanna do that or do we want it just to have the URI? Hmm. Hmm. I'm not sure. What are the implications of this? Well. So first of all, the data that's being passed in to this component is going to be, let's go ahead and, and make a, an interface here that's like, a, uh, we'll, we'll export it too, because this will be an interface that our, our, the consuming component will need to know about. Uh, it's not this, it is uh, media entry, we'll call it. Um, and those aren't the things we care about. We'll have a URI, which is a string. And there may be some other stuff. So one of the things we can think about here is what is the data we're getting back from the API? Like this isn't interacting with the API, but we know that the component that interacts with this component will be interacting with the API. Um, we don't have to make this interface look exactly like that data, but it would, be easier if it did look the same way. Uh, I don't want compile it, I want control P. Um, let's see. Here we go, not silence detection. Uh, not crud. What is the, uh, what is the, um, 
microservice called? It's like ingestion something. Here we go, ingestion API. Um, so we know that when we're returning data, we're shaping things into a VEC of entries. And entries looks like metadata and URI. Um, we probably want to pass some of the metadata. Um, maybe we, we don't have to say everything in the interface, but we can, we can, we can echo this structure of having URI and metadata. Um, that, that would be good. So let's do this. Let's, uh, let me bring this over here. And then what we'll say is the media entry is URI and then metadata. Metadata. Yep. And then, you know, it'd be really cool is if there was a way to get a TypeScript equivalent to, to, uh, you know, align this. That was one of the nice things with, um, uh, daily jewel about having uh, TypeScript front end and back end on, you know, node back end, uh, and then using TRPC, uh, and being able to share types like that, which works until you decide you want, uh, well, it's, it's good. You can end up in a situation where you make additional types in the front end because you want to change around the shape of the data to make more sense. That's going to happen anyway. It's still nice to have TypeScript types for the data. So you can type check the data coming into the front ends or being sent from the front end to the back end. Uh, but we don't have that here. So instead, interface, uh, face, uh, metadata, M media metadata. I don't know. Let's call it metadata. Yeah. Hey. There you go. Uh, well, you have a file name. Um, do I, do I actually care about any of the rest of this information at the moment? I don't know that I do like we'll, we'll have it. And we, if we decide we want to show some of that in the UI, we can, uh, and we can come back and just add that to here because we'll be getting it anyway. Uh, since we don't have. I mean, besides changing the API to send back less data, um, which we could, but a lot of these things are optional anyway. Uh, we could do that. I guess maybe size could be interesting to have. There we go. Uh, and then this is this. And I think this is gonna make sense because ultimately, the um, the component that wraps this is going to get data in this shape anyway. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, so we have this thing again, where we have a uh, a ESLint warning that entry is defined but never used. I think there's something wrong with my ESLint setup because that shouldn't. That shouldn't happen for a type signature. Uh, okay, so, uh, and we're not doing anything yet. We're not we're not showing anything other than just some placeholder stuff, but that's fine. We've defined the interface. So if I save this and we go back to stories, hey, now it's telling us the, the stuff that we have pre-populated here is wrong. We'll just remove all of this, all of this, and then we'll remove our stories. Again, I copied and pasted, pasted this a few minutes ago from our other story. Uh, so we'll get rid of that, we'll get rid of that. And then, uh, so media picker, uh, let's bring this over here to the right now. So archetypes are entries. Yep. How does archetypes work again? Uh, I guess like that on choose is an action called on choose. And then, um, okay. How did that work with the other story? Control array. It is an array, an array of something. Uh, 
entries. Call one. There we go. And then for this, we're just gonna have an entry. Uh, an, mm, excuse me. Uh, an empty kind of base story here. Uh, so entries, and then on choose, we'll use that fn from storybook test. If we go back here, then we can go back to Media Picker. And we can see here's our empty uh, one, or we can go to Docs. And we can see, see those details. Okay. So um, I think it will be good. Let's make, uh, let's populate a story with some data. Um, Something occurs to me, and I think it'll be easier to explain if I if I if I just let's make another story. So we'll make a uh, with entries, sure. Uh, so Copilot has generated something for us, and it has managed to infer uh, some things. I think what I'll do though is I'll make this actually look more like real data though. So I think what we're doing is we're doing like file local, and then I don't think we have the slashes, so we'll just do it like that. Um, generally the file name will match what's in the URI, uh, size, let's have a more realistic size here of maybe, uh, let's see, one, two, three, can we, we can do underscores, right? Uh, there we go. Okay. So now we have with entries and it doesn't show anything different, which is not too surprising. Uh, but it could. In fact, let's add a couple more entries to make this a little bit more interesting. Come on, Copilot, you did two, why not three? There you go. And of course, we're still not seeing anything here because we've not done that yet. Um, so. How is this going to work? So one thing that occurs to me, uh, let's do this. So we'll, um, let, let's actually do a thing. So, um, let me find my browser. What I was looking at, I was looking at the uh, material UI uh, widgets. Maybe we can start with a list like this, or just list all the items. Uh, yeah, so we'll do list, list item, list item icon, list item text, and uh, well, I'll select checkbox, but we shouldn't use the checkbox. Uh, we should use, do we have a radio? It should be interesting. I don't know if that's actually going to work, but it should be uh, should be fun. Okay, so let's see what Copilot generates for us. So it's going to do entries that map. Uh, the key will be the entry URI. Maybe it's fine. Uh, if you click the list item button, it triggers on choose. That is interesting. Um, probably just get rid of that, but list the item icon, radio, disable, ripple, tab, index, checked, edge, start, list item, file name, button, things. I think this is, it's something. All right, we're going to get rid of the, the on click because I'm pretty sure that's not right. Uh, and then we need the actual props or we could destructure de Entries and on choose. Uh, we're not using on choose, so we'll leave that out for now. Okay. Hey, look, we have a UI. <laughs> uh, 
let's uh let me let me switch the the, the side this stuff is on because I know that the um, there we go the little chat overlay thing is kind of in the way uh, okay so there we go so a couple things occur to me uh, with this one is that in practice Uh, in practice, like if we're actually in the UI, which is still broken because I haven't actually implement, implemented the, the other UI element. Um, if we were in the edit episode UI, um, we would expect that the episode may already have a selected file And we would want that to be selected. Um, so one of the things that occurs to me here is that this this UI elements props we're missing something. So there's entries, there's on choose, there should be like a maybe a value prop, which won't be immediate entry because we're not going to be storing all the metadata. It's going to just be a string. So we'll do that. And that's gonna give us some errors uh, because we then need to have value. Yeah, control text. And then populate things here as well. Value. Um, hmm. Technically this could be this could be a string or or null. Null if there's not a selection, right? And that, that should be the case here for our empty story. We'll pass in a null. So not only are there no entries, but there's not currently a file selected. And then in our with entry selection, I think it'll be interesting if we use a value that is maybe the middle value, uh, which Copilot has done for us. Good job. Uh, so there's that. Uh, the next thing that occurs to me with, with this is that this should not be the default view. Like when you when you have this component, there's something else that should be here. And in fact, we're gonna we're gonna wrap this whole thing in a fragment. Um, so the list is eventually gonna be embedded inside of a dialog. Uh, we'll get to that. There should also be a button, and the button is the um, the thing that says browse essentially. So we'll do a button a button from Material UI, not from React Admin here. Um, it won't be choose, in this context it will be browse. Like a file upload. Um, and we're gonna have, yeah, not, not that. We're gonna have some internal state here to represent should we be showing the dialogue or not? Are we choosing, I guess? Um, I mean, that, that's a thing that you could think about. It's like, do you want the variable to represent, um, the, uh, what it's doing or what the user is doing, uh, I guess is a thing. So, oops, that's the wrong character. There we go. So we could do, um, you know, showing dialogue. <laughs> we could do, um, uh, let's say, I, I like choosing. Set choosing. And by default, it's false, right? By default, the dialogue doesn't appear. Um, and then, um, We can do that. I think that that works, right? Every time you click that button, the only thing it's going to do is going to it's going to set it to true. The button is not a toggle, right? Um, it's going to be on the stuff that's inside of the dialog, which, like, we could make separate components for doing things here. Um, 
if we if we so desired but this is fine for now um so that does that and then we do need uh we can go ahead and add the dialogue right dialogue for material ui yep something like that uh and then there are let's open the uh docs here and of course it opens up there over here let me just look at the uh examples so we have a simple dialogue. Is that a thing? No, it's a function they've made <laughs> that uh, has dialogue and then it has dialogue title and then a list and then, okay. So the, we can have the list and then we have dialogue title. That's the only thing we're missing here. It's like a, a dialogue title. Go away. Dialogue sip. Oh, that's an icon. Okay. Uh, we have a title. Select a media file. Sure, that that's fine. And then uh, we'll close the dialogue. And then this sort of works, except of course we need to import this. Now you could argue what I could do here then is I've already, you know, although we've not built the outer component yet, I could further break this up into something that doesn't have the state, like this inner component where the value and the callback are props. And then I could exercise that in Storybook. And so we would be able to fully exercise it without any internal state in the component. Uh, and there's some argument for doing that, but I'm not gonna do that right now. So if I click browse, there we go. That's what that looks like. Of course, I don't have a way to close this now. Uh, I do, I can click outside of it. Um, I can also click this and I, yeah. Um, I do want like dialogue actions, I think here. I think once I start doing that though, that's where I'm gonna need also dialogue content. There we go. Um, let's see. Yeah. Dialogue content. See if it likes that. All right. And so now this is what that looks like. And it would be different. There wouldn't be a scroll bar if we weren't constrained to such a small, like that, a small area. Um, so the next thing we need to do is we need to be able to like select, I think it's fine if you click out and it cancels, uh, cancel also works. And then currently choose also just closes out. Doesn't do anything extra, right? Um, we, yes, let's, let's do this. We're going to make a const handle choose so set choosing to false and then call on choose which now we need to pull out from the props and then this and call handle choose and shriek Yes. Entry is not defined. Ah, right. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, I'm not gonna store the whole entry. I don't think we need to do that in this context. Or do we? It might be easier just to do that, right? And so now this entry there, although we don't need to pass that now, we get it here. 
Um, we can have a condition here. There we go. If if entry is not actually set, then we don't. The, these don't do anything. What we also want to do here is we want to say this button is disabled if we've not selected anything. Uh, disabled. If there's no entry. Okay, and we click this. Now choose is dis is disabled. All right. Uh, the next thing to do is we want to make it so that. Uh, a couple of things we huh we want to hmm. I feel a little painted into a corner right now because I realize what I really want it to do is that based on the value that's passed in in props, that will set the default thing that's selected. Um, maybe we can do that. I'm, I'm suspecting this is gonna be kind of janky. So we can say it's a const uh, default entry. Uh, yeah, maybe. And then I find, oh yeah, this, this, this returns undefined, not null. So for our type to be right, I can just change the type to be media entry or undefined. Um, that is still compatible with things. I might just do that then. Undefined. Cool. Aww. So, oh, right, right, right. Of course, we are not actually doing anything <laughs> to, to say, okay, is the thing that is entry, the thing that's selected. For that, we need to do something like, well, a couple things. Uh, entry is going to be this entry, so we're not shadowing um, our perhaps poorly chosen state. And, uh, and then we'll do this. And then we say checked is if entry is not, if it's defined, get its URI. And if it's exactly equal to the URI of this entry, then it's checked. So if I save that, I click browse, there we go. We did a thing. Uh, we're almost there. So then uh, we do actually need, and I guess I am actually gonna have a, a on click. There we go. Um, interesting, there's a selected as well. I think I dislike repeating this. Um, I'm gonna leave this for now because I think it's less annoying than rewriting this to be uh, in curly braces so we can calculate and then have a return statement. Okay, so if I save that, hey, now it's highlighted. And if I click this, I can change it. So we're, we're almost there. So I can click this and click choose. How do I get the, um, the bar back? Show add-ons, there we go. So an action happens. So when I clicked, <clears throat> when I clicked choose, it triggered the uh, the callback uh, that we passed into the props and we get URI and metadata. Now, yeah, I think that's fine. We, uh, the, the thing that's wrapping this is going to under, like, it's not gonna be weird for us to return that. And I, I said this before, right? It's passing in a list of these objects uh, with this shape, so it makes sense for it to get one back. It's not going to care about anything other than the URI, but I think for like the consistency of the interface, it's gonna make sense for it to, to behave this way. Um, so, 
But the piece that's missing now is that we want to show uh, the value in a text field, in a disabled text field. So I'll do um, text input, text field, not text encoder. Um, what is the, what, what am I after? Maybe it's text field from material UI. Yeah, like that. What does that look like? Not exactly what I want. Is there a way to make the text field the same height as the button? Do I care? Can I make the button aligned with? I don't, I, I don't I'm not going to worry about the UI all that much. Um, at some point I want to go back through and like, probably when we get to the point where I do like an actual full workflow, um, where a lot of things may not actually be using the default views from react admin, but instead we'll have custom views. Um, we may go back and I don't know if we'll keep using material UI or use something else. So I'm not going to sweat, um, the details of like, <laughs> it looks a little weird. Uh, it, 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 as long as it works, right? So if I click here, I click here, I choose that updates that as well. Um, and so then if we go back to empty, that's blank. If I go to with entries, it resets the, the inputs right to the default. And so that's what's reflected here. So that seems like a working component to me. Okay. Discord messages. One second. gets us at least to the point where we have this widget um, and then the rest of the owl uh, <laughs> the, uh, the actual um, thing that's gonna wire in our um, data provider API call method and react admin field stuff and use this component that we just made to actually do a thing um, I wonder how successful Copilot would be if I just said like uh, create helps if I if I can if I can if I can only type really uh, hey React admin uh, input that uh, uses the custom uh, media picker uh, component. And the um, find episode renders, I guess, of whatever the data provider method is. Uh, episode files data provider method to. Um, yeah, create a React admin input that uses the custom media picker, uses our custom media picker, uh, media picker component, and the find episode files or whatever the data provider method is actually called. Um, and uh, updates the the source in the uh, parent uh, form record, aka what an input in React Admin does. Uh, 
I, I don't have a huge amount of hope, but let's see what this does. Okay, I see some things that are, are already wrong. Um, where does it get find episode files from? It it tries to directly import something from a thing called data provider. That's not how we're doing things. It is using use input. That's probably right. Um, it is trying to get the record context. I don't think that's right. Um, it is trying to handle a, a change, although it's assuming that the prop that it needs to pass in is called on change. We did on choose because Copilot suggested it. Is. That seemed nice. Uh, so th there are some things here. Uh, I I don't think I really want most of this. I, I might take this as a good start. Uh, we're not doing any of that. Turn. Yep, something like that, and that, and then export default. Yep. All right, and then I don't need React.fc. We can just import that. We can import this from React Admin. We can import this from our adjoining file. Yeah, import from there. Yep. Looks good. So if I save that, uh, expected one argument, it expected the props. We just pass props through. Uh, what is the type, any? Sure. Uh, don't use any, but I'm gonna use any. Uh, but input doesn't exist on this. Uh, surprise, surprise. This is probably inspired from things that existed in a past version of React Admin. Instead, there's field and field state and form state and ID and is required. Um, do we do we use use input anywhere else? Do we have an actual example of this over here in duration input? Um, Yeah. Yoink. Let's pass props, though. Um, so this is extracting like is touched invalid error. So those are things that we did not handle in uh in our ui elements over here at all like um if the parent uh where we're using this input were to say oh this is a required field uh we would probably get some stuff back here um okay so i think maybe for now we can ignore all of these things so what's inside a field it is a controller render props. Can we, okay, controller render props. So that has an on change, an on blur, a value. Let's put this over here so we can use that as a reference. Yeah, value. Uh, and then on change. And then, uh, there's also an on blur, there's also a disabled. Uh, I guess those aren't things we're really supporting right now and I don't really care about supporting them, so I'm not going to. Uh, entries is the other thing. And right now we're gonna cheat by saying entries is an empty, empty array. just so that we can actually see something in our actual UI. Yep. Yep, it's a, it's a media entries array. And 
entry array. There we go. So that should render something in our UI. Uh, that was the, I don't need that page anymore. Uh, our UI, here we go. Half the screen, please. Uh, so now, media picker input is not def. Oh, right, because. So, back to. I think I'm done with Storybook for now. Back to um, our. Too many tabs. <laughs> back to the. Uh, there we go, edit.tsx. We actually need to import this component. There we go. We had not done that yet because, of course, that component didn't exist. So now if I refresh this page, maybe we can see our episode record again. We can. Um, so. There should be a label. There should be a label. Um... Let's uh, let's just do that, and then we'll modify media picker. Let's say label. Um, does text field take a prop for a label, or do we need to do something else there? Variants, props. Uh, yeah, I'm at variant from text field props. Text field props variant extends to this. Uh huh. Uh huh. Unchange variant input props. Maybe not. Um, this is where I go back to the material UI docs. Maybe I have that in a tab already. I have. I have many tabs. Here's Material UI. Um, text input, text field. There is a label. There is a label. Uh, and, but instead of hard coding that, we're going to say. Uh, Ooh, actually, that's cool. Maybe that should be like that, and maybe we should have some other kind of labeling. Why did that go over there? Okay. Um, do we have some other kind of field label? Or, I mean, we could just... Hold on. Is there is there a way to search? Yeah. How about a label? Input label API? Um maybe we can do something like this. This might not be the best way of doing this, but Uh, let's see. Input label. Uh, that's clever. It's real clever. Not what, what I'm going for here. Um, let's say if... Oh yeah, let me pull out label out of the props. Alright, and then... If we have a label... Uh, I guess we just do it this way. Sure. Yeah. What does that look like? Media file. All right, because we're not explicitly passing a label in our 
front end component. Okay, at least we have a default. Uh, and again, it doesn't quite match how other stuff works, but whatever. So, uh, yeah, th this is <laughs> about what I would expect. I guess another thing we hadn't considered, uh, we hadn't looked at in the story actually, when we looked at the empty case, was that it doesn't show anything there. And we should probably have something that says there are no files um, for you know a nice experience, but I don't care. So I'm not gonna worry about it. Instead, <laughs> let's actually hook up the API. Um, so we're, it's it's get rendered episode files is the uh, the data provider method, and um, yeah. So we we'll go in here, and what we want to do is um, we want to use the uh, use query hook. Const q equals use query isn't it? Hold on. Um, do I have an example of this? Isn't there, I, I know I have some things where I'm doing use mutation. Isn't there also use query? If there is, I'm not using it. Uh, okay, so in React admin docs, which is one of these tabs, maybe this one. Is there a use query talked about? Yeah, use query. That, uh, it's just the React Query uh, library. Uh, another thing that we have not implemented um, in our underlying components. No, I don't think that's necessary to do. I think this is where we handle um, kind of any kind of loading state. Uh, so we're just gonna copy paste their example here. Uh, like so, and we're gonna import all the things. Oops, I meant to select. Oh, it doesn't know. It doesn't know about where to find use query, but this does. Okay, and then um, so the purpose of this array is to provide a key for caching purposes. I think um, in this case. Um, there's not a lot we can do here. There isn't a, like an ID that uh, we're doing. We're just doing a custom method, uh, which I don't have copied anymore. There we go. I'm just calling that. Uh, so we're just gonna, I guess we'll just do this. Um, hmm. So it occurs to me, it might be, I guess it's fine, but one thing you could desire to do is have it so that it only fetches the data once the user chooses to open the dialog. I think if we did that, we would have to kind of restructure how we're doing things uh, a bit. Oh, we have one too many parentheses there. There we go, okay. And then let's import this, and I guess import this too, is a thing. Where, is, where was that coming from? That's also coming from React Admin, apparently, in their example. It's already defined. Why, why would you do this to me, React Admin? Error is already, already defined as a built-in global variable. Fair. Uh, error. Uh, component. Does that make you happy? Uh huh. Yeah, there's stuff missing. Error equals error. It's like their example isn't, uh, <laughs> name message type empty what are what are the what are the things here what are the actual props please uh -huh. 
yeah. Can we can we go to this component? Uh, props internal error components. Error component is optional. Inter error, internal error components is a div omitting a title and then optionally a class name. So what are you complaining about? Requirable. Okay, stuff about prop types. This is annoying. All right, we're gonna take a break. I'll be back in a few minutes with some more. <laughs> 